Hello, and thank you so much for coming by the channel today. I really appreciate it. My name is Susan, and this channel is Road Reads. And I'm a little early with my July reading wrap up, but that is because um, my granddaughter is going to come tomorrow to visit through the end of the month. And uh, so I'm going to be Grandma Susan um, for the next several days, and I have a feeling. I probably uh, won't be filming a video like this or reading very much. So let's just let's just be carefree and wild and do a reading wrap up four days early. All right, if you're on board for that, great. <laughs> Some of these books I've already talked to you about. Others um, I haven't. So um, the first book I read this month was uh, via audiobook on Scribd, and it was Pretty as a Picture. Um, I, 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 I almost DNF this book um, just because I wasn't in the mood for this kind of book at the moment I was reading it. Um, it is a um, well-written uh, by Elizabeth Little. It's a 3.54 on Goodreads. I ended up giving it three stars. Um, it is a murder mystery but like with a comic flair and the comic flair is totally my style the way she wrote it i enjoyed that it just i just wasn't in the mood for something light and yet i kept listening <laughs> while i was doing you know errands and and work around the house so um but this is no bad reflection on the book itself though if you enjoy um comedic I mean not, I don't want to make it sound like it's overly comedic but you know it has that that um wit to it for a murder mystery which is kind of weird and the plot actually is not that super but the, I feel like the writing makes up for it um it, it, the our main character is a film editor for Hollywood and um she is she's an interesting character she has all sorts of quirks which I always enjoy characters like that and she has an assignment um that uh that is is unusual <laughs> it's very mysterious what's going on um it's a it's a movie about a true life story of a girl who, a, a young lady who was killed years ago, but then someone gets killed in current time. And so they're trying to figure all of this out. Again, the plot is not great, but if you like light mysteries that have a wit to it and are just well written, then maybe you'll like this. Again, I said three stars. Um, the next book I read was a reread. It was <laughs> Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I read this back in March and gave it five stars. Um, I wanted to reread it to see, am I crazy? Um, because this book seems to go either way on, on booktube. Uh, it is shortlisted for the Women's Prize, so how crazy could I be? <laughs> but, um, uh, so I wanted to reread it and um, annotate it this time. I Hardly a page goes by in here where I didn't have something highlighted. It's just, it's just beautifully written. If you enjoy literary fiction, I think you're going to enjoy this. If you don't enjoy literary fiction, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this. It technically, it's a fantasy book. That's the main genre, but I don't read fantasy as a rule. Uh, not as a rule, but you know what I mean, as the norm. Um, but I really, I, I wouldn't even consider, uh, yes, it's fantastical, but to me, it's just, um, it's a beautifully written, like, fable of for us and our times and um I know by now you you all know this um what the story is about but Piranesi which is not his real name he um he is living in this world that is really just hall after hall after hall of marble rooms with statues and the tides coming in on the lower levels and the clouds in the sky on the upper levels and he he's there essentially alone except for he sees another person he calls him the other like twice a week 
And the other, you know, Piranesi, like he, his hair is braided and he has shells in his hair and, you know, he has no shoes and he's like living off eating the fish and everything. And then the other's like in his nice clothes with his cell phone, not the Piranesi knows it's a cell phone. So I remember reading this the first time and just so being sucked into this alternate world that we start off in. And um, reading it the second time was, of course, a very different experience because we already know what kind of world he's in and why he's there. And um, so, I don't know, a bit of the magic was lost on the second reading. And yet, don't, don't take that badly because, and yet, even though the first time I read this, the ending section meant a lot to me, it meant even more to me this second time. So I feel like this is the kind of book that could be read and reread and reread if this is your kind of right, if this is your kind of thing, the literary fiction, um, and um, you'll get more out of it each time. Again, this is not for everyone. It just isn't. I get that. That's fine. <laughs> it's for me. Five stars. Pure Nisi. Then the next book I read was The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. This was so good. Another five-star book. For someone who's been reading myth retellings for the last couple of years, why has why it taken me so long to read this one? First of all, it's Margaret Atwood. Atwood. So the writing is impeccable, right? Secondly, would she, uh, her mind, I just, I just wonder about her. <laughs> um, or, or, she takes the maidens that are hung at the end of the Odyssey and makes them like the Greek chorus. You know how our, the, the dramas from, um, you know, the ancient dramas, they have the, the chorus. Well, she makes those hanged maidens the chorus. And then we alternate between the chorus and Penelope I just loved this. Um, while I was reading it, I did I read this? I think I read this in one night. Again, I think I smiled through the whole thing, even though like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not a book that probably should have made me smile. I just kept thinking, Margaret Atwood, you were so good. Um, so if you enjoy myth retellings, you have to read this. If you enjoy the Odyssey, you have to read this. If you don't enjoy those two things, I don't know. I don't know that you would enjoy this, but I did five stars. I actually wrote a little review on it, so I think I'll insert that here and um, it'll give some more details. Margaret Atwood's immaculate writing and a myth reimagining is such a good read. Published back in 2005, the Penelope ad is Atwood's version of the Penelope Odysseus story. Using Homer's Odyssey and Robert Graves' The Greek Myths as source material, Atwood weaves her own special tale, giving Penelope narration power, along with the 12 hanged maids who collectively make up the chorus. The Penelope ad is irreverent, intelligent, and bitter, all in the very best way. When the book opens, Penelope is dead and in the underworld. She provides us with her history before she's famous, before she meets the wily Odysseus. We hear quite a bit about Helen, too, before her face launched all those damn ships. Heads up, Cousin Helen is a real piece of work in this. One of my favorite things that Atwood did, she told the story of the 10-year Trojan War in four paragraphs. God, I love her. Another awesome thing that Atwood did, giving the 12 hanged maids a starring role as the vengeful chorus. Alternatively, throughout, Penelope and the maid share their side of the story, and we'll see all these well-known characters in new and different lights. Having just read Emily Wilson's translation of the Odyssey in June, July was the perfect time to read the Penelope ad. Would you enjoy the Penelope ad if you haven't read the Odyssey? I wouldn't think so, but what do I know? Five stars. If you've read the Penelope ad, did you like it? Did you love it? And if so, were you already familiar with the Odyssey? Please let me know in the comments. Oh, so good. All right, the next book I read, um, I already did a review on this, uh, The Midnight Library, so you all know how I felt about it. It was nice. I would have wanted more, 
I would have wanted it a little deeper, a little more, um, at least for me, it didn't stir me as much as I thought it would, um, but I gave it three stars, three nice stars. If you're interested in my review on that, I will, uh, I'll link it below. After the Midnight Library, I listened to an audiobook. Okay, I listened to Behind Her Eyes, which came out, I think in 2017. Yes, okay, so it was published in 2017. It has a 3.78 ratings on Goodreads. I gave it four stars, but here's the thing. I already knew what the story was because I watched the Netflix series. <laughs> My sister-in-law, Emily, had recommended it to me and I loved it. It, it, it's, it has an element to it that I normally don't like in books, but because I had already seen the Netflix series, I knew that element was there. And I just thought it was really well written. Uh, the the it's a long uh, audio book. It's eleven and a half hours. Um, so maybe since it came out in twenty seventeen, maybe anyone who is interested in reading it has already read it. But or watch the Netflix series. But if you haven't, just really quickly. So this is set over in London. Our main character is a single mother, and um, she. Uh, is supposed to meet a girlfriend for a night out on the town, um, but the girlfriend couldn't make it. So she's at this bar alone and she meets this man and they talk and talk and talk and really just hit it off. And they share a kiss at the end of the night. And then the next day when she goes to work, she finds out this is her new boss. <laughs> so there's that. And then uh, he's married and she meets his wife outside like he doesn't know she meets his wife but she does our main character and they develop this friendship because she, she really enjoys uh and feels a connection with the wife so she feels a connection with the husband her boss <laughs> she feels a connection with the wife and all sorts of things happen in this book and it is a mystery thriller but with like a paranormal element to it which I don't normally like I like I want my mysteries based in reality normally I, I want the key to the mystery based in reality but because I knew that that's not this kind of book going into it since I watched the Netflix series I was totally okay with it and I just enjoyed it for what it was and uh, if you like creepy thrillers that have a paranormal aspect to it and you haven't read behind her eyes yet read it or or watch the Netflix series, which I think was also very good. Okay, the next book I read was Nick by Michael Ferris Smith. I've never read anything by Michael Ferris Smith, but I want to rectify that because this was five stars for me. I finished this, put it down and said, that was five stars but not everyone's gonna like it. So this is not like a universal five-star book, but it was five stars for me. I just loved the writing. Now, the so this is Nick. It's a Great Gatsby um, prequel. Um, as you know, The Great Gatsby is narrated by Nick Carraway. So here we get Nick before he ever meets Gatsby. We start off with him in um, France in, uh, World War One, and the first hundred or so pages is him in France uh, during World War One. And I gotta say, even though I thought, wow, this is so well written, I was not loving those first hundred pages because even though I loved getting, we get backstory about Nick and we also find out about this relationship he's developing, me, develop me, developing <laughs> in Paris, um, with um with a woman there I guess because it was during World War One Michael Ferris Smith is not like sugarcoating Nick's experience um as far as the warfare goes and it just at times was difficult to read I mean you know as a student of history you know you know these atrocities happen of course but like to be reading it in like this literary fiction way, I don't know, I find it a little more jarring than I would in a nonfiction book. But, um, so then after those first hundred pages though, oh, so instead of Nick going home, he goes to New Orleans. 
all sorts of things happen there. He meets another World War I vet and they're both suffering, of course, from what they've been experiencing. Five stars, but this is not gonna be for everyone. If you like literary fiction, read this. If you love The Great Gatsby, read this. Uh, if you've never read The Great Gatsby, but you have an interest in that, go ahead and read this first and then read The Great Gatsby. Speaking of which, that was the next book I read. <laughs> so F. Scott Fitzgerald's masterpiece, uh, published in 1925, The Great Gatsby. So this has ruined my reading pretty much for like the week after I finished it. All I wanted to do was really just keep reading about Fitzgerald and that whole world and The Great Gatsby. Um, I, I did a, a review on this where it's a total gush. I'll, I'll link that below to five stars. I When I read this, I so took my time really just ate it up. Um, there's hardly a page that goes by where something's not highlighted. Um, the writing, oh my gosh. I never appreciated the writing and the story. I've always loved The Great Gatsby, but like I love it now. Like it is, it's definitely in the top three American novels. It may be the top one. I don't know. I have to reread my beloved To Kill a Mockingbird because <laughs> I, I, I I did consider that my favorite American novel like all my adult life. So I'm, it may be get replaced by The Great Gatsby. I don't know. Um, it's just, just so good. I don't need to gush again. But it kind of screwed up my reading. Like remember in Monte Cristo May after I finished that, like nothing felt good to read. Like nothing seemed good enough. <laughs> it was like a hangover from Monte Cristo. And that's how I felt with The Great Gatsby. I picked up uh, my copy of Hemingway's The Old Man in the Sea because I thought, oh, that'll be good to go straight from Fitzgerald's best work to Hemingway's, you know, novel, Pulitzer Prize winning novel. I, I made it like 10, 15 pages in and I'm like, no, not going to do it. <laughs> I'm just so not interested in Hemingway's book right now. Um, so that will sit on the shelf for another day because it just did not, for me, the writing just does not compare. The story just does not compare. This was so good. And I mean, my original thought was, oh, reread The Chosen and the Beautiful because I loved this. I gave it four stars, but I loved it. I, I had docked it a star because I do feel like there is a character choice that is just, it's not the right choice. Um, and it's a kind of like a big choice, but the writing again, I just thought was so beautiful. So I was gonna, you know, after I read Nick and The Great Gatsby, I was gonna go right into The Chosen and the Beautiful as a reread because I just read it last month, um, but via audio. And I just, I couldn't get into it again because I was st still hungover from Fitzgerald. Um, but like I said, so I, I have been obsessed with Scott and Zelda for years. When did this obsession start? Um, I think like, 2011-ish, 2012-ish. I remember my youngest stepdaughter was still an undergrad because I was at one of her track meets reading a book about Scott and Zelda. <laughs> but this is this is considered Matthew um, Bercoli's biography, some sort of epic grandeur. I think this is still considered the Fitzgerald biography. So I went back through this after finishing The Great Gatsby and not getting into anything else. And I read the part of, of while he was writing Gatsby and then, you know, the reception, which it's so sad because the reception of The Great Gatsby in 1925 was not good. Um, critically, it wasn't great. And then um, popularity wise, it wasn't good at all. It wasn't really until World War II um, when there was this program where they were sending books uh, to the troops overseas that The Great Gatsby started gaining momentum and then it became uh, a book that, um, you know, high schoolers or junior high was supposed to read. And, and then it just, it just snowballed from there. And I just so wish Fitzgerald knew how, how revered The Great Gatsby is. I know tons of people hate The Great Gatsby, whatever. <laughs> I just don't agree. It's just so good. Um, 
But uh, so I read some in here and then I went to my Maxwell Perkins book, Editor of Genius. If you haven't read this and you like literary biographies, oh my gosh, get this. Run, don't walk, <laughs> get this book um, by A. Scott Berg. Um, so then I went through this where they were talking specifically about Gatsby and I just didn't want to leave that world. But then I finally found, oh, oh, I forgot to say, I got an audio book. Um, uh, oh, geez, what was it? And So We Read On by Maureen Corrigan. And I, I, I listened to that on Audible um, also. So this Maureen Corrigan, she is, um, she's a professor and she's on NPR, they're yeah, one of their book reviewers. This was a 10 hour and 40 minute audiobook, but so much fun if you enjoy, um, if you enjoy hearing about Fitzgerald <laughs> like I do. Um, it has a 4.02 on Goodreads. I gave it four stars. It was published in 2014. She loves Fitzgerald too. She loves The Great Gatsby. And uh, so if you're in the mood for that kind of nonfiction work, I, I recommend that. Again, I got it on audio. Um, so like I said, nothing was nothing was chiming with me uh, after finishing The Great Gatsby. And so on a whim, <laughs> I downloaded the letters of Sylvia Plath the second volume on my on my Kindle. And um, I mean, I knew eventually I would read that because after reading Red Comet last year and the Bell Jar and getting her journals and getting Ariel, like I knew that the letters were to come. I did not know how much I was going to enjoy it. I mean, I don't know that I would be enjoying it. That's what I've been reading the last three nights. And this is, uh, it's a lot. It's her letters from 1956 until her death in 1963. Um, so there's a lot. And, uh, but knowing, having read Red Comet and, and the other books about her, to hear her story in her words via her letters and you have to take into account that sure, she's going to sugarcoat some things and stuff like that. But I am finding it fascinating. Every time, I just look forward to getting back to it every time. I am loving it. Isn't that weird? Like I did not, I knew I would like it. I did not know I would love it so much. But I have a feeling it's going to take me a long time to get through. Because I, the, over the last three days, I've read in it each evening, um, and I'm only like 20 some percent <laughs> into the book. So, um, I mean, it's, it should be heartbreaking because you know how things are going to go, right? But I'm not finding it heartbreaking. I'm just finding it, I mean, because she's so young. I mean, she died at 30. So I'm reading her, her letters from, you know, she's in her mid and then to late twenties. And again, you know how it's going to go. And yet I just like, I just kind of want to hug her as she's writing these things. You know, she, she has everything ahead of her and she's so in love with Ted. She's so in love with writing. She's such a passionate person. She's so focused. I, I mean, I'm not like that at all. I'm not focused at all. I just, I, I really respect her focus on writing. Um, I don't know. I'm enjoying it. And I'm, uh, like I said, my granddaughter is coming. So I don't know how much more I'll get to read in that while she's here. But we, she and I are going to do lots of reading. She's going to bring her books. And then I have some like, uh, on the banks of Plum Creek. So we'll read in that and Peter Pan. I've got, so I've got some books too I want to share with her and I'm looking forward to that. But what have you guys been reading? Has July been a good reading month for you? I gotta say, I, I July has been a great reading month for me. There were no one or two stars, two, three stars, and the rest were four and five. Like you can't complain about that. And uh, so anyway, I enjoyed sharing this all with you and I will see you next time. Bye.